Hello, the tutorial today is very similar to one that I released uh, not too long ago about sorting objects. So if you've already seen that and you feel totally comfortable with it, maybe you don't need to watch too much more of this video. The reason I'm doing a second video is that I have a specific use case that I want to address, uh, and that's because I'm about to incorporate something into the grid trading series, and I just need to set up some classes to maintain a list of objects. My specific problem is that I want a list of positions that are open and I want those to be an ordered list. So this will use a lot of the technique from the earlier sorting video, but I'm actually pulling it together into a utility specifically aimed at maintaining a list of positions. So to start with, I need a class where I'm going to hold the information about the position. Now this is different to the included classes for C position info because they only give information about the currently selected position. I want to store position information. So I've got my own class here, C position data. I've placed it inside orchard and basket. I've created a folder there where I'm going to create the basket that holds the group of these. So this is position data for a single position. Uh, I start with include object.mqh and I'm inheriting public C object. That's important and we'll get back to that later. I've got the constructor and the destructor and there's no code in here so far. Because I'm going to store information about a position, I need some variables to hold that information. And so these are just some of the pieces of information you want, might want to store. I'm not storing everything because this is just a demonstration. And typically, as I said here, I would store these as hidden member functions, so either protected or private, and expose them through functions. But just for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to make these publicly available variables. So I've got the ticket, the symbol, magic number, position type, open price, profit, and time. And that's the time that the position was opened. Now in the constructor, I'm going to want to set these back to some kind of zero state so that you don't accidentally use values that might just be left around in memory. Rather than initialize each of those in the constructor though, I'm going to create another function and I'm going to call that function from the constructor. And that way I'll have a separate function that I can use later if I want to call it from somewhere else to reset these values. I'm just going to call this function zero. It doesn't return anything. And that means that in the constructor here, I can call that zero function. And there it is. And now I'll just put that function in. And there's my zero function. Does nothing but set the values to zero, although the symbol is set to an empty string. And the next thing I'll want to do is to fill these with actual information from a selected position. So I'm going to create another public function that I'll call fill from current, and this will simply get information from whatever is the currently selected position and populate these values with that. And here is the fill from current. Now, if you're doing this in MetaTrader 4, obviously you don't have positions, you have orders, but it should be fairly simple to replace everything that's relating to position here with order, and these position get functions you would replace with the appropriate order functions. But the first thing I'm doing in the fill from current is zero. So I just initialize again. And then I set the ticket, the symbol and so on. And I'm using position get integer for the ticket, get string for the symbol, integer for the magic number and so on. So after I've called fill from current, this object or the instance of this class will have values in all of these variables that relate to whatever was the selected position at that time. And then I'm free to move on and look at a different position. So this is my class for storing all of the information about a position. Next thing we need to do is move on to the basket class where I store a group of these positions. So now here again, I've started a class C position basket and it is a list of positions. I've included here arrays slash list.mqh. That list holds a lot of inf or has a lot of methods that I want to use and a lot of capabilities I want to use. And that's actually going to be the base class for this position basket. I've got an include for position data because I want to include that information from the position data class. And here's the class C position basket inheriting public from C list. I've got a constructor and a destructor and as before, nothing in there so far. The first thing I'll create is a function to add and this will simply add an object of type C position data into this list. It's a public function because I want to be able to call this from somewhere else to add this data. And C position data pointed to a data object. And this is a very simple method. All I'm going to do is 
call the parent class add method. Now, this is not strictly necessary because I could simply call that method directly or I could leave out this add method from the position basket and this would still work because it's the same method name and the object that passed into this add class or the object that's passed into this add method is of type C object and remember that my position data inherits from C object so it is of type C object but I just want to make sure by having this method here it gives me some flexibility if I want to do more things later so I might want to automatically sort this after I've performed an add or I might want to perform validation in here to make sure that this is of type C position data and that's everything that I need for the position basket now the one thing that's missing from this is sorting and that's the important thing that I'm using this position basket for if I go to the list it already has a sort method so I don't need to write a sort method that performs the mechanics of sorting but remember this is sorting objects and there's no simple greater than or less than between objects because it depends what you want to compare in the object all of that comparison is actually performed by the position data class so the data object itself is responsible for knowing whether it is greater than or less than another object of the same type. Now remember I said it was important that this inherits from C object. If I go to C object, there is a method here called compare. The compare method accepts one argument of type C object itself and then a mode. So the mode is uh, really for you to use as you like and I will and I'll show how that's used. What this is saying is that this object, the instance here, is comparing itself to the object of the same type that's been passed into this function. Now you can see here that the default is a return zero which will do nothing. The return is an integer and it is either a positive meaning this object is greater than the node passed in, negative meaning this current object is less than this node, or zero meaning they're functionally equivalent. What I need to do is create my own virtual method inside the position data class to override this function and perform the comparison as I would want to do it for that position data class. To override this virtual function, I need to have exactly the same arguments. So the easiest way to do that is I'll just copy this. So I've copied that line, but I actually want to write more code than this. So I'll just delete that and then I'll create the function. So this is my function and remember it's important that this is exactly the same as it is in the C object class in order for the override to work. And that means that in the C object class these arguments are declared as type object. So I want to first convert that node into a type C position data because the C object doesn't have these variables for example. So I can't refer to them if I simply refer to node. I have to create another variable or cast this in order to turn it into type C position data. And that's simply declaring C position data, pointer, data, because this is a pointer. And I just use the casting operator here, brackets C position data, asterisk, because it's a pointer, node. And that converts node into data, and data is now of type C position data. And now I'm going to want to perform comparisons between this object, the object that is hosting this method at the moment, and the object that was passed in, this object. And that's where I use mode. So mode, I'm going to be using to tell me which of these variables I want to compare to determine which of these is greater than or less than the other. So just to show you how this begins, I'm using a switch statement for that mode. I'll have several modes. If I pass in a one, then it says that I'm going to compare by symbol. If I pass in a minus one, I'm also saying I want to compare by symbol, but I'm going to compare in reverse, and you'll see in just a moment how I do that. And then all I'm doing is calling this compare value function, where I'm passing in symbol, and that is this symbol variable from the current object, the symbol from the data that's passed in here, and that mode. And the only reason I'm passing the mode is that I want to know if it's positive or negative. So this compare value is another method that I have which will perform a comparison between this and this, return one, minus one, or zero, depending whether the whether symbol is greater than data symbol, less than is minus one, and zero if they are the same. And if mode is negative, then it will reverse the one and the minus one. 
Now, I have different types of variables. I've got a U long, a string, long, and an enum position type. I don't want to write the compare value function for each of those, so I'm going to use a little trick. And that's to declare a template type name t. It returns an integer. This is the compare value. And the arguments to it are of type t, this value, of type t, the compare value, and the integer, which is the mode. And this is of type const because it's being called from this compare function, so you need to make that a const. What this effectively says is that I can call this with any type name, and it will determine what that type name is based on the type of the two arguments that are passed in here. So to the bottom of the code and write that function. This looks exactly like the declaration above, template type name t, this value int mode const is important. And then I simply say int result equals. And I'm using the ternary operators here. So if this value, so this value and compare value, if this value is greater than compare value, the result is one. And then another ternary operator inside here, if this value is less than compare value, the result is minus one. And if I get to this point, then they must be the same. The result is zero. And then I simply have here, if mode is less than zero, result is multiplied by minus one. So that just reverses it if I'm sorting in reverse order and then return result. So this will compare any two variables as long as they're of the same type. And the intent is this value comes from this object and compare value comes from the object that was passed into this compare function. So that's it for symbol. I'll just create some more now and they'll be exactly the same. So now I've added some more. I've got the ticket, the price open, the time, and all I've done is give a different number to each of those. And the negative of that number is the opposite sort. You can see the structure here is the same for everything. Compare value, internal variable name, data dot variable, and then pass through the mode. Uh, you also note I don't have break statements here. The way the switch statement works, if case one, then it will execute that and everything until it exits the case statement which means that case one and minus one will both go into this block of code. I don't need to have a break statement because I do have a return statement. So the code will terminate here. If it's a two or a minus two, it will flow into the code until it hits something like a break or a return and then exit. So I'm using these return statements rather than break statements. I also don't have a default statement on this switch. I don't really need one because I'm not doing anything. If none of these case statements are true, then I'll simply fall through to this return zero, which means that these are functionally equivalent or you've passed in some argument that wasn't understood. So that takes care of comparing all of these different variable types, time, profit, price open, ticket, and so on. What if you want to compare two things? So let's say you want uh, to sort first by symbol and then by profit inside the symbol. Well, that's not too difficult either. So this case statement, six or minus six, symbol then profit. So I get result by using a simple compare value of symbol. That's exactly the same as this. But instead of just returning there, I'm storing it in result. Now, if result is one or minus one, that's the major external or the outer sort. So I can return straight away. But if it's equal to zero, then I want to update it by comparing the profit. And so at this point, Result is either zero if both the symbol and the profit are the same, or it's a one if the symbol is greater than data symbol, or if symbol and data symbol are the same, it's a one if profit is greater than data profit and so on. So that's how you just do compound comparisons. So now this is all set to use. I'll go to a script that I have that will run a test and I've already created some trades so that I can load them in and sort. So this is my test script, position basket test. Uh, I've included the position basket.mqh file here, and this is in orchard basket, so orchard basket. Um, I'm calling a method clear. Now that clear method is actually in the list. Remember that the basket inherits from lists. There's the clear method, which takes care of deleting all of the contents of the list. So I don't need to write any code for that because it already exists. Uh, I'm declaring C position data data, I'm going to be using that in a loop. And then I've just got a simple loop where I'm going through all positions, selecting that position. And obviously if you're using MetaTrader 4, you'll be selecting through the orders. And then I say data equals new C position data, 
fill from current, and then I add it to the basket here. After that, I'm going to print a message that says I'm sorting it by profit, calling basket.sort with argument 5. Remember that 5 was sort by profit. And then I print basket. That's a method down here where I'm simply going to say data equals get first node. Now, this is important. More of the things that the list class gives me. Get first node will get the first element from the basket. And while that element is not null, so when I run out of elements, it will return a null. I'm going to print a message, symbol, profit, and time and then data equals data dot next that's also a method on the object class and or a method on the c object class and this will simply get the next element in the list and eventually when we run out of elements it will return null and this loop will terminate so i'm calling print basket and then next message here just to separate them sorted by symbol and then profit so this is the compound test i'm calling sort minus six i decided to do a negative sort here so i'll return them in reverse order, and then I print the basket again. So you'll be able to see the two sets of data coming back. Uh, and I realize I, I should have declared data. So, so C position data, and this is a pointer, get first node. Okay, so I already have some trades that I placed earlier. So if I run that script now, it should print messages in the experts tab. Experts tab's empty. If I go to scripts, Orchard position basket test. I can just drag that onto a chart. Uh, so first message here sorted by profit. And then I'm just getting all of the profits in order. So this is a negative 88 or 0 0.88, 0 0.87 uh, to a positive 25, 29, 75. So that's just in order of profit. And you can see these symbols uh, not in any given order here. So I've got an Aussie here and an Aussie there and a pound here and there. So then sorted by symbol and then profit. And remember this one is in reverse order. So at the top here I have USD CAD, which is the highest uh, alphabetically of the symbols. And then the profit minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.8. So it's going from the highest value to the lowest value. And then I've got three pound trades from 0.75 down to minus 0.88 so the sorting has worked there as well that's almost everything there's just one thing i will do to make this a little bit more useful i'm going to take all of this code and put it inside the basket class all of this code here and put it inside the basket class so what i'm going to do is create a fill method inside the basket and i'm passing in some default arguments i'm passing in the sort mode which is defaulting to zero. Symbol, which is defaulting to an empty string. Magic, default to minus one. And the type defaulting to minus one. And now here is the method with almost just the code that I've copied. Uh, obviously the default values here in the arguments. I call clear to begin with. So it empties the basket. Declaring the C position data. I've got the usual loop through positions. And again, if it's MT4, they'll be looping through the orders. All the same code that I had in the script. I'm still filling the data from the current selected position and then I'm adding some filters. Now you could save a little bit of time by checking these values before loading the data but I found it more convenient to load the data first because then I can use the values from that position data class. And I'm saying if symbol is not equal to an empty string and it's not equal to data symbol then continue. The same thing with magic if it's greater than or equal to zero so I'm basically saying the default values that get passed in here mean that I'm not going to filter on them. So empty string, magic number below zero or type below zero, I won't bother to filter on those. Otherwise, I'll check that the value in this position data object matches the argument passed in. And if it doesn't match with the not equal, I continue, which will just loop through or skip the rest of the loop. And the rest of the loop is just where I add that data to the basket. So that takes care of filtering. And then I just call sort on sort mode, which the default is zero, which would be no sorting in my case. Uh, otherwise it will do the sort. So if I go back to the script, I'll just take this loop out and I can put in here. Um, and I'll just do the sorted by profit to begin with. 
and I'll just uh, use GBP USD. All of the trades I have were for magic number zero and I don't care about the type. So if I just do that, for example, uh, and then there's no point in doing sorted by symbol and profit because I will only have one symbol. Um, and just looking through this, I'm sorry, there's a minor continuity error here. My recording stopped. Um, I can also see a small problem in this code. I, it's easy to fix. Uh, the problem is that if I hit one of these conditions and then go on to continue, it means I've created an object of type C position data, but I haven't used it anywhere and then I'll get uh, garbage collect errors later. So what I will do to fix that, in this position, I will just have delete data. Now on the first run through, that's not going to be a problem. Data will be just an empty C position data. No harm in calling delete there. But after I've actually used it, if I get to this statement and use add data, I can't just delete it because it's already in the basket and I'll be deleting a, an object in use. So the next thing I'll do is set data equal to null here. So I'll add it to the basket here change it here so the one in the basket remains unchanged I set it to null here next loop through it gets deleted if I hit one of these statements I will go to continue which will go straight back to the beginning of this loop and delete data which because it hasn't been used but then on the very last iteration there will be no more loops so the continue will simply exit the loop and I just want to have one more delete after that Okay, that should be everything I need. Now I can run that test again, and it will be using just this position basket. Let me go back to position basket test. Uh, I can also remove these two lines because I don't need them. Let's comment those out. So the basket clear is happening inside the basket fill, and I don't need a C position data. And now if I run the test, there it goes. I'm only finding GBP USD because that was my search and I have the profit in ascending order from minus 10.48 up to plus 10.35. So that's uh, everything for this particular class. When I do use it, I'll add a few more variables because I need some more information. But other than that, that's how it all works. Uh, I hope this has been useful to you. If you have got some value from this, then click the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, click subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. Thank you for watching.